He makes the deaf hear and the mute talk. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Is Jesus repulsed by your fleshiness? Is he disgusted by your crow's feet and grown toenails or varicose veins? Does he hold his nose at the stink of you? No, Jesus doesn't do any of that. He would never do that to you. And here's the proof. He's taken on your flesh and blood. Jesus has your eyes and nose, your ears and tongue, and your fingers. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He is incarnate, that is, infleshed. Jesus did what only your flesh and blood God can do. He took his fingers and put them in the deaf man's ears. He took his mouth and spit and touched the man's tongue-tied tongue. Then Jesus turned his eyes toward heaven, and he groaned out loud and spoke a word. He said, Ephatha, which is the Aramaic word for be opened. The man couldn't hear, so Jesus said, be opened. The man couldn't speak either, so Jesus said, be opened. And immediately his, the man's ears were opened and his tongue was set loose. Jesus didn't pull back from this deaf, mute man from flesh and blood. Jesus touched him. Jesus put his fingers in the man's ears. He spit and touched the man's tongue. Jesus doesn't pull back from you either. He sees you as you are, flesh and blood, creatures that he created, and he loves. He sees all your faults, your fake smiles, your flaws, your false ideas. He knows how you turn a deaf ear to the truth, preferring to live a life of ignorance. He hears how you speak lies and refuse to speak when needed. He sees you as you are, and he still gets down into the dirt to be your savior. Indeed, he was beaten down into the dirt for you. He was beaten until he fell, beaten until he groaned, he was beaten until he sighed, and then he was lifted up out of the dirt so that they could drive nails into his hands and feet. He has taken your flesh unto himself. He also takes then your sins onto himself. He takes your sickness, he takes your diseases, he even takes your death onto himself. There's not a single sin that you can dig up for which he hasn't already died. There's no debt you owe that he hasn't already paid in the full. There's no silence when you must speak or flippant tongue when you should keep silent that he hasn't already forgiven. There's none of your sicknesses of body, soul, and mind for which he hasn't already suffered. There's no death for which he hasn't already died. He died for them all, and when they laid him to rest in the dirt, he then opened the grave. He ephethed your grave. Jesus ordered every grave to be opened, even yours, already done, finished. That's your hope, a hope that no prince or authority or doctor of this world could give. Cling to him when things get rough, when you get sick, or when things don't go or as you planned or you want. Your eyes or ears or tongue or heart or mind, one of them or all of them will fail to work the way that God designed them to do in the end. You will someday die, and maybe even today. But actually, that's impossible. Ever since Jesus ephethed your grave, you won't stay dead because Jesus has already gotten that over with. And now, there's only life for you. Jesus opened your ears, and he loosed your tongue when he baptized you. 
Jesus put his fingers into your ears, spoke to you, and washed your sins away. That's why in the early church, the pastor would put his fingers into the candidate's ears and actually say, Epitha, be opened at baptism. That is a great baptismal confession of the church. But don't worry, I'm not going to start doing it. <laughs> when you were born, you couldn't hear God's words. But when you were reborn, Jesus ephethed you. He opened your ears and he loosed your mouth. When you were born, you couldn't speak to God, but when you were reborn, Jesus ephethed you. He opened your ears and mouth. He said, be opened, and you confess Jesus as Lord and God. And of course, that's what Natron and Nicholas will do later on, is bear witness to what God the Holy Spirit did for them in their baptism, as they confess with you the Christian faith. So you see that Jesus actually gets down to earth, or is actually as down to earth <laughs> as it can get. There's no fleshy, mental, or soulful difference between Jesus and you. He's flesh and blood, just like you. He has ears, just like you. He has eyes, just like you. He has a tongue, just like you. Even a heart and a mind, just like you. And Jesus comes to you, flesh and blood, as concrete and real as anybody else. He's living and breathing. He is risen. Not an abstract doctrine, not some spiritual God in the sky. No. He touches your ears with healing. As his voice moves the air with the declaration of forgiveness of sins and vibrates your eardrums with his absolution. He touches your tongue with his atoning flesh and blood in the sacrament. They're healing you forever in both soul and body. And since he has come to you, flesh and blood, there is no need for you to look around to find God. God is already one with you, flesh and blood and all. And he has ephethed you. He's opened you to actually enjoy this new life he has given you, to enjoy being human with all of your faults and flaws and false ideas about Jesus being disgusted with you. No. He's opened your ears to hear the truth from him. He's loosed your tongue to confess praise and thanksgiving to him. He's opened your heart by way of your ear to fear, love, and trust in him alone. And he's opened your heart, too, to love those around you, whether you like them or not. He's opened you all up, all of you, to live and to move and simply be with him today and always. Thanks be to Jesus in his holy name. Amen.